Hi, my name is Frank Odo, and this is my 67 SS Chevelle. All right, everybody, welcome back to Muscle Car Campy. Jim Camposano here with another Golden Era Hot Rod. This car is the super rare 1967 SS396 with the 375 horsepower L78 engine. How rare? Only 612 were made that year and crazy. Everybody thinks there was a lot more of them than there actually were. Before we jump into this video, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell up top so you're notified every time a new video goes live. Back in the late 60s and early 70s, most young people were driving hand-me-down cars, a 60 Ford, Dart, Nova, Chevy 2, what have you. Right after he graduated high school, Frank Odo bought this car you see here. He was 19 years old, found this car, and what did he do? Well, he painted it black. Yeah, it's kind of wacky, but you know what? Now it's back to the way it's supposed to be white with the red pinstripes on the side. It's a gorgeous example of what Chevrolet was building back then if you knew how to order a car. As crazy as it seems, Pontiac had sold nearly 100,000 GTOs before the first SS396 Chevelle was built. A huge shot to Chevrolet's bank account and reputation as a performance division. When the first Chevelle SS came out in 64, for the first two years, it was really a trim package with bucket seats, console, and extra chrome. The standard engine was a straight six, for goodness sake, and the first optional engine was an even bigger six. Chevy hit the ground running in 66, however, and over 72,000 SS396 models went out the door. This 396 was available in 325, 360, and 375 horsepower iterations. The mighty L78 was not heavily marketed and in 67 was not even mentioned in early sales literature. You know, back in 67, Road Test Magazine tested an L78 four-speed Chevelle, much like this one, did not have power steering, and claimed it was ill handling, and that the 396 would just overpower the tires, and it had Armstrong steering, and blah, blah, blah. Well, to you I ask, we know this car is a classic today. Where are those guys from Road Test Magazine? Where's Road Test Magazine today? Shuttled off to the recycling bin of history. You know, Frank, one of the things I noticed under here is you switch back to the original factory intake manifold. When I first met you and saw this car, it had an Edelbrock intake on it. What made you go back to the stock intake? Well, uh, back in the day, I had a tarantula on it with an 850 double pumper on it. So, you know, bigger is always better. Well, it ended up, we did take it to the track and we actually, the car slowed down. So we ended up, we put the, everything back together. Uh, car actually went at uh, 1330 compared to a 1390 with all that extra stuff in it. And, uh, you know, it runs cooler. Uh, uh, GM had their act together with engineering, a dual plane manifold compared to a single coin. And if I knew any better when I was a younger person, I would know that that intakes an 8,500 plus manifold, you know. So things. it really wasn't turning on. Oh, no. You the, were just, you were shifting before it was even yeah, in it was out spot. of the power band, you know. Yeah, the 1330s is smoking for it this car. Is. That we, car. Yeah, you know, it really was. You know, we didn't race it a lot, but we did take it down a few times. And uh, that was the best I got out of it with, with a good set of street tires. We didn't have slicks on it, but we uh -huh. had the radial tires on. I think they were uh -huh. TAs at the time. Yeah. Right, just not even a drag radio, not just a regular a street radio. radio. No, that was before drag radios. Oh, know? wow. Okay. <laughs> and what was the mile an hour? Do you remember? Uh, I can't remember. I know it was over 100 and, 100 and some mile an hour, 106 maybe or something, but I can't wow. remember. You know, this is like a time warp under here. You know, you've got the factory trim tag. I mean, it's so fun to see a car without a power steering pump. Absolutely no smog equipment whatsoever. I mean, 67 was the first year they had seat belts front and rear right, standard right. equipment. Right, yes. um, the dual pop master cylinder, 67 was also the first year for that. So yeah. this is a really, really, it is, like I said, it's like going back in time. Yeah. These were absolute animals on the street oh, yeah. and it really did earn a reputation you know, the SS396, and it wouldn't be much longer until it overtook the GTO as the best-selling muscle car in the country. Yeah, this car right here, it's a 780. Uh, when my friend uh, Craig restored it, 
he says, you know, this is a service carburetor. He says, chances are this thing was under warranty and they replaced it. He says, it's the correct carburetor for the year and, and the model. It's just that it's not the original one off the car. And you put a new cam in this car recently, so there will not be any burnouts today. Uh, not today. It's still breaking in. I don't think I have more than maybe five or six mile on it. I, oh. I got 20 minutes from the break-in, but I need to probably take it on the freeway and keep it at different levels. And... But I will do this. It feels good. Yeah. What cam did you go with? I just went with it. I think it's a Crane 286. It's just an RV cam. It's nothing special. Okay. I just figured we want to use the car more and maybe go to a farther away car shows and just so we don't have the maintenance because uh, this car's always had a solid lifter cam in it. And not that I was adjusting it all the time, but it could be a pain in the neck, you know. So hopefully this hydraulic, I never have to touch it for 10 years. Okay. But it's not a hydraulic roller, just a hydraulic. Just a hydraulic cam, yes. Okay. And this is an M21 transmission this car came with, not the uh, standard M20. Yes. Or actually, I think you could, maybe not with the L78, but I guess you yes. could get a three-speed in the regular SS396. Yes, you could, yeah. It was a uh, Saginaw cast iron uh, three-speed on the floor. Wow. Uh, you could get a rock pressure, which I wish I had. I mean, yeah. they're very rare, few in between. I just love the way they sound, you know. This is a trip, you know, Bench seat four speed, nothing screams muscle car. Long before the Roadrunner came out, the yes. Chevelle SS396 had a bench seat, four speed shifter on the floor. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm actually sitting lower than I would in a bucket seat. Yeah, I think you are. There's yeah. something about a 60s car with all the chrome and stainless with white with a red interior. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a gorgeous combination. Of course, the reds were much deeper and richer than some of the reds that they use in cars today are yes. almost yes they're a much softer color yeah. you know so you don't get that real bright red like this this is this is absolutely beautiful thank you yeah. and i am loving this nice little rumble when you get on it there oh, yeah like i said i love the hood the factory hood is very cool on these cars it's almost yeah. like you know the gm motorama you know, it looked like a Hot Wheels car before yeah. Hot Wheels cars even came out. You're right. Well, you know, that's what drew me to the 67. Uh, I love 66s and 7s, but the hood scoop, it's so rounded on the 67 compared to like square and yeah. on the 66s, you know. And, and, uh, and it didn't really do anything. No. It was just something. It's just the way to, it looked. And I think yes. that was one of the big factors of me half to own a 67, so, you know. Uh, now, I noticed you, you put a um, aftermarket AM FM cassette player in it. Do you mind if I take a peek at the cassette right now? Oh, sure. Let's see what we yeah, got please. here. <laughs> oh, meatloaf, meatloaf, bad out of hell. Bad you know? out of hell, yeah. Oh, God. I can't believe it's, it still works. It still works. I yeah. wore out my copy. I replaced yeah. it with a CD. <laughs> now it's on my phone oh. so I can listen to it anytime oh. I want. Oh. Yeah. Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Yeah. Rest in peace. What a fab. I spent more hours and burned more gas cruising the <laughs> avenue up and down with that. Eight, I think in my first case was an 8 track. Right, 8 track. Then yes, it went yes. to cassette. cassette. Now CD. CD I think yeah. I made Jim Steinman and Meatloaf pretty rich. <laughs> I bought like three different formats on that thing. That's oh, fabulous. Stupid memory? Go ahead. Stupid is okay. good. Okay, well, I was going to college. I was working at a gas station on a weekend, afternoon shift. Well, my buddy 
he was a rookie cop. He just started working in our, our area, our town. And I said, I'll meet you for uh, for uh, for something to eat. You know, after the shift, we'll go get something to eat and talk. Well, anyway, he had a Trans Am Firebird 400. Really a nice car. Uh, he just had headers put on. They took the distributor out. He had that done. He had it all tuned up. Put a fortune in it. So he come back and he starts bad, bad mouthing me about, oh, I, my car will blow you away in this and that. It's, I don't think so. I, but, but, but. I says, well, you know, let's do it, you know. So uh, I really race it on the street. But I says, let's do for a, a first gear rollout. And we'll just go and see what happens, you know. Well, you can't let your manhood go challenged. No, no, not at all. So for I God's said, oh, I got it, you know, so we're going to do this, you know. So he said, okay. So we did it. So here we're going down to. I guess the main strip, you know, but it's a night that nobody's there, and there's a stoplight way, way ahead of us, you know. Well, here we both get on it, first gear, I mean, we are, st are, are straight equal together. I mean, just can't pull away, can't do this, can't do that, and we're going, and we'll go third gear, and we're still right there, get into fourth gear, past the, uh, the, the, the police barracks. <laughs> Rick would have got fired right then, you know. Sure. And uh, so anyway, I ended up in high gear, and I had attack at the time at 6,000 RPM. So Good. you go figure 125 it, miles an hour or so. If you plus, said yeah, at least, yeah, probably gears. somewhere to 355 gear. So anyway, in the distance, I see there's a red light. Says, I said, well, I'm stopping, you know, and, that's, and thank God I put center metallic brake shoes in it so I could stop. Well, he wasn't so lucky. He went through the inner, uh, middle of the intersection. So he gets out of the car. He says, well, who do you think won? I said, I don't care. But that was the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. And it could have been really dangerous, and I never really did anything like that again. Honestly. Now, it wasn't even a good memory. It's just kind of stupid. It's good hearing about it now. Thank yeah, God right, nobody right. got hurt. But yeah, you know, Rick's retired. He's still with us. He's retired, so I don't think it much matters, you know, yeah. now <laughs> his job. Yeah. I probably would have went to jail for I don't know how long, you know, so. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Muscle Car Campy saying see you later. Like I said, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, make sure you're notified every time a new video goes live. We've got some classics coming up. You won't want to miss one of them.